Welcome fellow recovering traditionalists to episode 196, repackaging style word problems, transforming missing part word problems. Welcome to Build Math Minds, the podcast where fidelity to your students is greater than fidelity to your textbook. I'm your host, Christina Tonnevold, the Recovering Traditionalist and BuildMathMinds.com founder, where my mission is to change the way we teach elementary math to our kiddos. So are you ready to start building math minds and not just creating calculators? Let's get started. Now I shared last week that I was looking through the book, putting essential understanding of multiplication and division into practice in grades three through five by NCTM, when I came across something that is going to be the focus of three episodes. Last week was the first one about up-leveling missing part activities, and this is part two. As a quick refresher, missing part activities are where students work with incomplete information. A typical missing part activity is when students know something like eight is the whole or total and five is one of the parts and they have to determine that three is the kind of missing part. And a typical missing part word problem might be something like, Christina has eight cookies. Five of them are chocolate chip, the rest are oatmeal. How many oatmeal cookies does Christina have? But in the multiplication and division into practice book, I discovered a different way to write some missing part word problems. In the book, they called these repackaging tasks. Now here's two examples. And for those of you who are just listening, I do have a picture from the book, but the problems say, Number one is Rosa has 18 bags with six marbles in each bag. She wants to repackage the marbles with 12 marbles in each bag. How many bags will Rosa need? The second problem states Lucy has 24 bags with 12 marbles in each bag. She wants to repackage the marbles so that she uses six bags and she has the same number of marbles in each bag. How many marbles will Lucy have in each bag? Now these relate to the type of missing part problems that we talked about in the last episode. The first word problem is essentially 18 times six is the same as blank times 12. These aren't the straightforward problems that your students are used to. And so you might be tempted to have the students just pluck out numbers and write the equation. Instead, I want to encourage you to use and think about the LESH models. This is the contextual model. Encourage them to visualize what's also going on. Encourage them to model the problem and yes, you can do the abstract symbols of the equations, but again, that's not the main goal. As I said in the last episode, the reason problems like this are such an important addition to put into your missing part activities is that you are building a more cohesive sense of what equality is in mathematics, and you are helping them build some really big mathematical ideas through the properties of number that they are developing while they're thinking through these types of problems, which is also helping them develop some thinking strategies for operating with numbers. The image I shared gave two examples for multiplication, but here's some for addition. Christina has a bag with eight chocolate chip cookies and another bag with seven chocolate chip cookies. She wants to give one bag to her friend Rosalba who has a family of 10 people. She wants to repackage the cookies so one bag has 10. How many cookies will she have in the other bag? Another example is Annalise is organizing her books on the shelf. She has 28 books on the bottom shelf and 37 books on the top shelf. She wants to reorganize the book so her top shelf is full. She has space for 40 books on the top shelf. If she fills that top shelf with books from the bottom, how many books will she have left on the bottom shelf? 
Every day in math, your students should be doing number routines, contextual slash word problems, and a game. Last episode was a number talk for up-leveling your missing part activities. This week was up-leveling word problems that have a missing part. And next week, the final episode in this series on missing part will be a couple of games that I love, but kicking it up a notch, right? So keep on doing the traditional missing part problems, the word problems, especially there's lots of word problems with missing parts, but this style builds so many more mathematical ideas and helps your students start to see that they can break apart numbers to help them essentially make a more friendly problem when adding or multiplying. They see that they can take numbers apart, create a new problem that is easier for them to solve, but it still gives them the same answer. So until next week, my fellow recovering traditionalists, keep letting your students explore math, keep questioning, and most importantly, keep building math minds.